Alright guys, today I'm going to be walking you through my 4-piece Tactician Support Healer build. Now the build revolves around super high skill power, very low cooldowns, and the ability to overheal your entire team without them needing to run the vigorous chess piece. This means that it's a very valuable build when matchmaking with random agents uh, and trying to complete activities with other players that you don't personally know or that don't have a microphone. Before we get started, a quick overview of the Tactician's Authority gear set in general. The two-piece bonus is 10% increased skill haste. Now this means that you can dish more heals and faster. The three-piece bonus is 10% skill power. All of those heals will be stronger. And then the four-piece bonus, every bullet you or your group hit enemies with adds 0.2% skill power to you for a max of 30% bonus. Bonus disappears after 10 seconds of not being updated or after 10 seconds at full power. This means that there is an element of timing to the build. And it also means that your entire group just landing bullets will make your heal stronger and decrease the cooldown on your heals by raising your skill power. I'll start off talking about my gear and I'll begin with my gunslinger vest. Now it's very important to know that there are alternatives that you can use other than the rapid talent but that is the best in slot and it's what I would highly recommend for this healer build. Now I've opted to run with electronics and very briefly before we get into the actual stat rolls on the chest piece we're going to talk about the composition of the build and that is three pieces of electronics gear and two pieces of stamina gear. You are completely ignoring firearms as your only role in the squad composition is to heal. Now talking specifically about the chest piece it has the rapid talent that is the best in slot as I've already stated and the major attributes are armor and health I would highly recommend this you can go for something like EDR over health if you really want to uh, it won't hurt the efficiency of the build but health is the best way to increase your toughness overall and for a minor attribute you always want ammo capacity Moving on to my second high-end piece, that will be a specialized backpack. Now, I would highly recommend running specialized as the unconditional 200% of firearms and stamina that's added to skill power actually equates to a very large number since you are specking primarily into stamina with a hybrid and off stat of electronics. Uh, this will be a large chunk of skill power that's active at all times. It reduces cooldowns, uh, it makes your heal stronger, and it's really one of the best high-end items that you can possibly run, especially in a healer composition like this. Now, for all the major attribute rolls, you want armor wherever possible, uh, especially on the backpack. And for minor attributes, I would prefer ammo capacity, but bleed resistance does not hurt. Now, I've also opted to run this as one of my stamina pieces, and you want to aim for over 1250 in all your major attribute rolls as possible, uh, major stat rolls. If you can get over 1200, that's ideal, but 1250 uh, is the way to go. Moving on to our Tactician's Authority pieces, we'll start with our mask. Now, it's important to note that there's some flexibility here. You do not have to roll the same things that I have, but this is the optimal combination for outputting healing overall. I've rolled high into my main stat of stamina. For a major attribute, I've gone with skill power, but this is where the flexibility is. You could roll health if you want to increase your toughness, uh, but skill power is the way to go. Again, if you're trying to just baseline, increase the amount of healing you can do per second to all of your allies. And for minor attributes, I would actually prefer enemy armor damage, as that will slightly increase my DPS overall. Uh, but the blind and death resistance is also good. On a side note, you can opt for disrupt resistance. That would be a very good minor attribute to run here as being disrupted is one of the most dangerous things for this build and your squad in general when you are running this style of support. Next up, we have our Tac Authority Gloves, and these are very straightforward. The only thing that you really need to look for is a high main stat roll, a high base armor roll, something over 900 is optimal, but if you can get closer to 1000, that's best, and then main weapon damage of the gun of your choice. I am opting to run a Liberator, which is an assault rifle type, so I have assault rifle damage as a major attribute, but other than that, uh, it doesn't really matter. You can have an SMG, you could have an LMG, uh, it's really up to you. There's only one important thing on the gun, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, and outside of that, health on kill is nice, critical hit chance is nice, but you're really not orienting yourself around damage, so you don't need to go for that optimal god roll of main weapon damage, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage, as most other builds need to run. Next up, we have our Tac Authority knee pads. Now, there's a couple very useful attributes that you can roll on these that I have actually not done so, but I will talk about them. The first thing to note is that I have another electronics piece. It's up near 1250. That's my target, so that's good. Uh, for major attributes, you have armor. You're always going to roll this everywhere. And then for minor attributes, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. I have blinded death resistance, increased kill XP, and bleed resistance. Now, the most optimal thing here would be to have disrupt resistance and enemy armor damage both as minor attributes. Again, being disrupted is one of the most lethal things for this build, and enemy armor damage would marginally increase your DPS. But since I don't care about DPS, it doesn't really matter, and increased kill XP will work fine. I have not got an optimal set of knee pads. There's a lot of room for min-maxing with this build. It can do a lot more healing than even I am able to demonstrate right here, uh, but it still functions quite well. 
Last up, we have our Tack Holster. This is a very straightforward item. You're going to look for the highest possible main stat rolls in all three categories, but primarily electronics for this build in particular. You want as high a possible armor roll as you can get, both on the base piece of gear and as a major attribute. That is always a given. And it's something that's going to remain intact and the same in a lot of different builds. It's very straightforward to find a good holster for any given build. Moving on to my weapon, it's actually fairly straightforward and there's not very much to discuss. I am opting to run a Liberator, but the most important thing is that you have find a gun that has high RPM to stack your Tactician bonus faster and that has Talented in the third slot. Outside of that, nothing really matters. You're not going for raw weapon DPS, you're not going for unlocked talents, you only need Talented in the third slot so it is free, and then a high RPM, whether that takes the form of an MP7, an MG5, uh, a FAMAS even if you re-roll it, a Liberator, doesn't really matter. Uh, those two things are what you need to look for, Talented and a high RPM. For all gear mods, you want to run Stamina with Armor to increase your toughness, and for all Performance mods, you want to run First Aid Ally Heal to increase the amount that all of your different heal skills will do to all of your teammates. Weapon mods are largely unimportant in this build, though I would say that the two core components are increased mag size of over 100% and reload speed on the underbarrel. Now this is because you want to be landing as many bullets as possible, but the per bullet damage does not matter. You don't need to go for headshot damage or crit damage or anything like that. You just want to be firing as many bullets as possible for as long a period as possible. So an extended mag and reload speed are the core components of your weapon mods. Moving on to skills, this is where the build really excels and gets more interesting. Now the first thing to note is that you can run Overdose if you want to overheal all of your teammates without them running Vigorous. Now again, this is designed to matchmake with random agents and not have to require them to change their build in order to give them an overheal. You can support any group of players, uh, regardless of what type of build that they're running, in a very positive way with this build, with this setup, and Overdose is a viable uh, choice because of your performance mods. Now as you can see here, my ally heal before any bonuses, that's before for my Tactician's Authority, 30% increased skill power. That's before Talented for 15% increased skill power if I do manage to get the killing blow on anything, uh, whether it be a skill object, you know, whether it be an enemy agent or an NPC, is 132,000. Now that's a large chunk. My self heal is 195,000, and this is something that has a lot of utility. Now, as soon as your teammates are running Vigorous, you get some flexibility. Now, Overdose is only for if they are not running Vigorous and you want to give them an overheal, but as soon as they start to run Vigorous, you can switch over to your booster shot. Now, one important thing to note is that it has a decreased cooldown from the Overdose modifier. You have 26 second cooldown on your Overdose, again, before any stacked up Tactician's Authority bonuses, uh, any other skill power bonuses in general, and then you have booster shot with 23.6 seconds. It also heals for about 20,000 more, a little over 20,000 more, at 159,000 HP. And it gives bonus increased damage and increased damage resistance. This build is tremendously more powerful if your allies do run Vigorous. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And as soon as you have one or two teammates that use the Vigorous chess piece, switch to Booster Shot immediately. Uh, you don't need to do it, but it's something that will help overall and give you increased burst damage and mitigation. It's a very valuable tool. Also, you have the Defibrillator mod. Now, your ally heal with this modifier is 292,000 and a 17.7 second cooldown. This is actually the best one to run if you are just going for increased healing. If you're just going for, uh, if they are running the Vigorous Chest Piece and you're only going for that overheal, uh, provided again that they are running the Vigorous Chest Piece, that's very, very critical. If your teammates run this, the build is much better, though it does not need them to. Uh, 292,000 is enough to give a 0 to 100 full overheal bar on pretty much any agent out there. But it does require them to change up their build, and it's something that has a drastically reduced cooldown from the other other modifiers. So again, it's a viable choice, uh, but the, the standard when you're matchmaking with random players is going to be Overdose. After that, I would recommend Booster Shot, but Defib does have a lot of utility. Now, the second skill that you're going to be running, and this is another really interesting one, is Immunizer. Now, a lot of people may say that this is your standard healer build, but not the way that you're going to be using the Immunizer. Now, the way the Immunizer works is when you drop it down, it cleanses all status effects, uh, it gets a large area of effect, and then it heals over time. But if you instant detonate the, the Immunizer box, if you pop the skill again, it will detonate for a burst of healing. Now, what this allows you to do if you detonate every single time you drop it instantaneously, it allows you to have two AoE burst heals on the ground that cleanse status effects and the uh, immunizer modifier uh, on the, the heal skill has 16.1 second cooldown which means you have two skills before any additional attack bonuses of 26 seconds and 16 seconds and this does not reflect rapid rapid is not reflected on this meter there's been a lot of testing regarding this a lot of people have different theories on it but I can def definitively tell you that rapid is not reflected here so subtract 
15% from both of these numbers, from both 26 and from 16. So you have reduced cooldowns already. That's not factoring in any other methods of reducing the cooldowns. So I think you can see where I'm going with this build. You're just going to be dropping cleansing AoE burst heals all the time during team fights. For talents, it's actually very straightforward, and you're not going to change this, as you probably won't be running this build solo, as you lack all damage. You will always be running this in a team, uh, and thus you're going to be using triage to reduce cooldowns. Again, uh, this will decrease dramatically the amount of time it takes between when you can pop your immunizer, or your overdose, or your booster shot, etc. on the ground. Again, just increasing the amount of healing that you do. Uh, and per teammate, this becomes more powerful. You're going to run Strike Back, again, because if you do get low, 20% reduced cooldowns is a big deal. You're going to be firing off heals constantly with this build. You want Combat Medic to heal your teammates by 40% when you do pop a medkit. Everyone in your squad should be running this, but as the healer, if you do even have just a tiny bit of damage on your health bar, you can keep your DPSers alive using a medkit. It's just another form of healing. And then you want Critical Save. If you do get low and pop a medkit, the mitigation will keep you alive a lot longer, and this is essential to every build out there, especially in PvP. I believe the critical save is the most important talent. Alright, so for some gameplay demonstrations, I have some clips that I picked up after stream the other night with a few of my friends uh, down in the subway system. Now the whole premise, again, is dropping the support station, then instantly detonating it for that burst heal and to cleanse status effects. As you can see there, it does a chunk of health every time I put it down. It has a very short cooldown. I can constantly be firing overdoses to give my allies an overheal. Uh, that's the first section. I do have some, some booster shot gameplay after this, and I can always be dropping that immunizer, or very frequently at the very least, uh, to again cleanse all status effects and burst heal when I detonate it. This build is capable of keeping your teammates alive, uh, even when sustaining fire from about 12 to 16 other agents. In some situations, uh, we were able to take on the entire server, even when they had Tactical Link active, uh, because I was running the signature skill, the Medical Wing signature skill as well. If you time all of your heals, uh, you have Combat Medic, which is a, you know, uh, a heal for every one of your teammates. You have Overdose, which is a large burst heal to all of your teammates, again, if they tag it, an AoE heal. You have your Immunizer, which again is a burst AoE heal. Uh, and then you have the Signature skill as well. You have a tremendous amount of healing output potential. Uh, not to mention the fact that when you're decreasing all of these already short cooldowns by an additional 15% uh, per time an ally walks into your heal, uh, you're going to be able to, to cut down tremendously on the time between when you can pop it and you can just keep giving them that overheal. This is a really, really strong build. It's something I'm really happy that I put together. You have things like Strike Back. If you get low health, you're just constantly firing off heals. But the one sacrifice is that you're not going to be dealing vast amounts of damage. You are not going to be looking, aiming down sights. You're not going to be the one that feels like they're they're playing a run-and-gun style game. Uh, you're not going to be you know procking things like on the move. You're not even going to have it active on your character. Uh, you are purely here for the healing role. You're supposed to be dropping heals, cleansing things, uh, keeping your allies alive. And as you can see there, for almost the entire duration of that fight using Overdose, my allies were never under an overheal. And the second they were, the second they were actually taking damage, I could put them back up to full health and full overheal. Uh, it's a tremendously powerful build, and it's one that scratches that itch for a lot of players, not only looking to make Tactician work, but also make a healing build uh, that they feel super valuable when running. Now, another thing to note is that you can run it with Booster Shot. I've swapped over to some new gameplay here. As you can see, there are now four members in my squad instead of three. Uh, we got another person in here, and I started to draw Booster Shot on the ground, which increases their mitigation, uh, their, their damage resistance, and their damage output. And it has a shorter cooldown, and it heals for more. And if I am running Booster Shot and my allies run Vigorous, it's even more powerful because they can get that overheal. So as you can see, I'm firing off heals constantly. When one heal is down, the other is always active. Uh, it's something that does require a little bit of timing and is very susceptible to disrupt, uh, but it is tremendously powerful at keeping your allies alive, even in you know uh, entire server versus your squad scenarios. It's something that's a lot of fun. Uh, I've liked to play the healer role for a while now, since about 1.3, the ending of 1.3, I have enjoyed playing the healer role, and a lot of people have asked me, and this is my response to the question that comes frequently, you know, can Tactician perform that role? Can Tactician work? Uh, is it only for Seeker Minds? What would you recommend? Can you make a healer build with Tactician? This is my response, and I think that it works really, really well, and I'm extremely happy with it, and I'm happy to have finally, you know, put this video out there, uh, made the build, and started using it. And it's something I will keep in my library of builds, because I feel like it is strong enough to justify it remaining in my inventory at all times. Uh, it has the strength, it has the utility, um, you know, it, has, it reduces cooldowns for you and your squad mates, uh, and it just dishes so much healing that you can survive a lot of things. It's also valuable in PvE. 
Uh, just to speak to that for a couple of seconds here, I play the game mostly from a PvP perspective. I kind of measure all of my builds against other players. However, the build does perform very well in PvE. If you're struggling to complete an incursion, if you're struggling to complete you know, a mission or something like that, if you put on even a, a similar build to this, uh, tacticians with the right pieces, and then use the right mechanics and detonate that immunizer immediately when you drop it, you're going to be able to do a tremendous amount of burst healing, and as a result of that, uh, get through that content that normally would have been hard. Now, as you can see a couple seconds ago, my teammate went down because I was disrupted. That is the worst thing for this build, and that's why I mentioned disrupt resistance on the knee pads uh, and on the mask and on other in other areas uh, specifically because disrupt resistance is going to make it make you less susceptible to that one weakness. In a game like this, there are soft and hard counters to every mechanic, and the hard counter to this build is Flashbang Sticky, uh, is something like, you know, Disrupt EMP Grenades. Anytime you cannot use your skills, your team is vulnerable. And especially if they've gotten used to the playstyle being able to face tank a lot more than they should because uh, of your constant, constant burst healing output, um, they will then go down rather quickly. So it's important to call out, make sure you're communicating with your team, but even if they don't have mics, uh, if you can just avoid those disrupts, if you can cleanse them at the right time, you can do a lot of healing. You can keep your teammates up. Uh, you can augment any squad composition. No matter what build you put this into, uh, no matter what squad you put this build into, it is going to be tremendously valuable. So I like this build a lot. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up there a little bit. As you can see, we tank a lot of damage. I'm keeping my guys alive. Uh, I always have increased healing to give them, and it's a super fun thing to have in any squad, and I would always look for it if I was a DPSer in my squad. So thank you guys for watching. As always, check out the links below if you want to support the channel. As you can see, I go down when my heals glitch out there. Specifically, there was a glitch. If you rewind and look at it, my heal uh, fired on the ground, didn't actually fire, and then was not active for that duration. So just to make sure, I wanted to show that you're susceptible when your heals are off of cooldown, but don't fire. Glitches and disrupts are the two Achilles heals of the build. Now again, sorry to ramble on, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, please check out the links below if you want to support the channel, and have a nice night.